I'm first going to look at you in the impact position because it's the most important. Everything the ball does, how far it goes, how high it goes, how much it spins and curves, is a direct response to the laws of physics in motion at the brief moment of impact. On the left is Tiger hidden in iron. This is video I took at last year's US Open. On the right is Grant Waite hitting the driver. Grant was a PGA Tour player during the 90s and now is one of the top instructors of tour players. Grant's teaching partner is a good friend of mine, Joe Mayo, who lives in Las Vegas. Grant was considered by many as having one of the best and most fundamentally sound golf swings. While on tour, he always had some of the best ball striking statistics. At impact, they both have the majority of their weight on the left side. In fact, the average pro will have 85 to 90 percent of their weight on the left side at impact. I've drawn a red box from the center of their ankles to the top of their head, and you can see that the red line off their left foot is passing right through their belt buckle, showing how the center of their mass is right on top of their left foot. They both have extended arms through impact. Their elbows are close together and not separating. Having extended arms and weight forward allows them to control the low point of their arc, of their swing. When hitting the iron, this fundamental allows the placement of the low point to be in front of the ball so that they hit the ball first and then the ground, producing the maximum compression of the golf ball. These fundamentals also allow for the highest level of consistency in controlling the face angle and club path during impact so that you in turn have the highest level of consistency in hitting whatever optimal ball flight you want. So at impact, Bob, um, you can see you're much more flat-footed than Grant is. He is driving his um, waist, his hips, um, much more to the target. So moving your lower body uh, towards the left foot is something that will inc improve your ball striking and your ball flight. It's much easier to swing across the ball and have an out-to-in swing path. Uh, which causes a rightward curve and uh, when you are swinging flat-footed, when you're only swinging with your upper body. Now, I'm not trying to make you look like a pro or I'm not expecting you to have uh, the same position as, as Grant. Uh, we just want to reach your potential of getting closer to what the pros are doing with their lower body. So just making small improvements in these fundamentals will make big improvements in your ball flight. That's what we want to focus on. Now as we continue your forward swing, you can see how your left arm breaks down here. That's what we call chicken winging. In that um, this here, and there's the club, then it's, and Grant will keep that arm much more extended. You can see how his wrists are crisscrossed here. You, the, his white glove is underneath the right hand when he gets to that position. When your right arm is parallel to the ground, your white glove is still above the, the right hand. And so this is something that uh, you will hit the ball so much better and more consistent when we uh, learn how to swing our arms connected, keeping our elbows closer together during the, the swing. And you're not going to fix this by trying to think about how to move your left arm differently. The left arm is doing the wrong thing for a logical reason in that if you keep this foot down and planted, that keeps your hip uh, back here and it doesn't allow your, your lower body to turn towards the target. You can see how Grant's belly button is facing the target. He's released this hip. His right hip is right on top of his left foot. Because he has turned his lower body, he's allowed to keep the handle of the club in front of his chest and so the distance the handle is from both shoulders is equal. Therefore, if they're equal, he can keep both arms straight. But if the handle moves closer to the left shoulder and further away from the right shoulder, the left arm has to bend to accommodate for that shorter distance. And so by releasing this back foot and, and shifting to our left side during the swing, it allows everything to turn towards the target and when you're turning towards your target, you can keep your arms connected and in front of your chest. 
and it becomes a body swing and not just uh, an arm swing. Now, Bob, this is you at the top of the back swing, and I tell you, I really like the position you're in. Now, Grant's a little bit more on his left side, and I like the fact that Grant is, is pressing that ground with his left side, but you've got a really good shoulder turn. You have really loaded your hands. You've got a ex very ex uh, straight left arm. That's a classic uh, position up there. And you're in a you're ready to really unload some serious club head speed in power with that setup right there. Uh, you're you're flat on both feet, and which I obviously want in the backswing. I don't want you to be lifting your left foot up in your backswing. So, uh, but I really like the coil of your upper body and you're setting those hands. We we just need to make sure that on the downswing we move to our target. And uh, there's some drills that, that uh, I want to show you uh, how to come through and hit the ball with extended arms. And you're going to see a big difference in your ball striking. Um, but uh, we, we need to come through and hit the ball with straight arms so that we can deliver the most amount of power in the most efficient way. And that's, that's the main thing we need to work on with your swing. And this would be true with irons and woods. Here you are with an iron and uh, you're again you're in a pretty good position at the top of the backswing you're ready to swing into the golf ball and I'm gonna frame advance this and just watch how uh, steel your lower body is there really isn't any movement uh, to speak of towards the target we're just basically swinging our arms only your lower body your knees aren't moving you're flat-footed you're doing, and then of course you're going to check, that causes that chicken wing right there. Now from the waist up, it looks good. In fact, you end up with a, if you look at this finish, Grant's hitting a driver, but if you look at the finish of both of you, you look very similar. I mean, you're off the back foot. Um, this is in a great little position right there. You're facing the target with your belly button and your chest, your eyes. Uh, you've folded this, this right knee, just like Grant has. Very little difference in how the two of you look at the end of the golf swing. Uh, but there is a big difference in how the two of you look at the moment of truth, at impact. And so... It's, we've got to get into a position where your impact position looks more like Grant and more like the pros, just like your finish does. Uh, so getting to the left side is something that you already are doing, but you do it late. And so we just need to start that process earlier. I need to show you how to do that. It won't be a difficult task. I know that your coming to the school was... Uh, a commitment to get better and uh, we need to uh, now that we've identified some of these things to work on uh, we need to go ahead and start making some of these adjustments uh, it'll, and I'll show you the drills where you can quickly uh, uh, capture this new feeling it's not my job to tell you about the fundamental it's my job to help you experience the fundamental and once you start experiencing it you'll be able to execute it